on, be perfectly honest. Are you applauding me or the fact that the roof does not leak here at NBC? <laughs> Carl's in a good mood for yes. this funky weather we've been having. What, what are you sitting down playing? What is that? I'm, go, I'm here with Slim Whitman. Slim Whitman's with us yes. tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Slim Whitman is here. Now, I've been over to the Alvino Ray Guitar School. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to play that? And we can also iron your shirts on. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I can't play that you know thing. You that? No, that's a very difficult instrument. What is, what is that called? It's a called a uh, very difficult instrument. <laughs> No, that is a steel guitar. Steel guitar. Made out of steel, all the whole thing. It okay, is. Okay, that's steel the, guitar. Therefore the name, all steel guitar. That's right. Okay. Oh, why do I get into this? Anyway, I'm Johnny Carson, a firm believer in Darwin's theory of comedy. <laughs> Tonight you're, you're about to hear two million year old jokes that have adapted to the environment and have survived. <laughs> known as the monologue Rex. <laughs> Any tourists here tonight? <laughs> Welcome to the mud and slush belt. <laughs> we have had a couple of thunderstorms the past week that have been dynamite. Last night it opened up again, and uh, it's still hazy out. may rain again tonight. Yes. It is very wet out there, I want to tell you. How wet? <laughs> Thank you, class. Very good. <laughs> It's so wet out there today, I saw a robin at a laundromat waiting for his worm to come out of the spin-dry cycle. <laughs> oh. All right, what do you got? <laughs> no, it's so wet today, uh, Robert Young showed up in a strange woman's house and said, what are you so nervous and tense about? I just came in to get out of the rain. <laughs> It rained so much today on Hollywood Boulevard that the weirdos were wearing raincoats over their raincoats. <laughs> it's messy out there. Messy? How mad? I, don't... I thought I was. I saw two women. I thought they were mud wrestling. Turned out to be two housewives trying to get a parking spot at Ralph's. What, 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 what am I doing like this for? How how messy was it? No no no. no. <laughs> Look, the rain has affected you, bother you? Yes, it, it does. affects me like anybody else. My moat overflowed, washed away my drawbridge. <laughs> now, as if we don't have enough trouble in California, we are now having what is called acid rain. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. That's one of the, that's oh, one of the yeah. big no, not that acid rain. <laughs> it's been raining acid over here for years. No. <laughs> That's caused by the chemical pollutants, the smoke from the factories goes up into the atmosphere, condenses in the clouds. When it rains, the acid rain comes down, and it is very bad. You see out here, we have acid rain, we have earthquakes, flash floods, mudslides, fires. What else? Smog. Smog? Smog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a great place to live. If you die of natural causes out here, it's considered an accident. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> This is called Make Up Your Own Joke, folks. <laughs> well, let's go to the news and see if Ronald Reagan is sending George Jessel to El Salvador as a military advisor. <laughs> There's some good news and bad news. Uh-oh. Good news is the American auto sales went up substantially, 21% over last year. I think that was stimulated by the, uh, by the rebate program. Good news is the rebate checks were just recalled by the Goodyear Rubber Company. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Rubber check. Rubber check. <laughs> My producer's explaining the jokes to me. <laughs> Comes kind of sweet things in the news today. Last night, the Ronald Reagan celebrated their 29th wedding anniversary. Uh, it was kind of sweet. 29 years ago, Ronnie asked, uh, the parson asked Ronnie, he said, uh, I'll get this correct because there's a joke here. <laughs> What happened, uh, 20... 29 years ago? Yeah, what happened? Well, the parson asked Ronnie, he says, do you take this uh, woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? <laughs> the parson couldn't speak very well. That's right. He? Well, he was nervous. They were both actors. And Ronnie said, well... Uh, oh, to hell with it. I don't like that joke. Anymore. Anyway, I would like to congratulate the president and the first lady on their anniversary. And Reagan gave, uh, Ronnie gave uh, Nancy a Longine. And she looked at it and says, I was hoping for a Halston. <laughs> That's a dress. 
expensive designer dress. Longina's a watch. Reagan's the president. And, Is he and I'm married? in trouble, I mean. And he married, yeah. Anyway, Reagan came up with another one of those wonderful statistics that he likes. He said that if every year of his marriage, every day of his marriage, was a slice of Velveeta cheese, <laughs> you could make enough grilled cheese sandwiches to feed the Polish army. That's how many days they've been married. <laughs> well, now let's see. Ronald Reagan announced, you know, a lot of people are worried about the budget cuts that are coming up. But he said, you know, he's gonna do what they call an across the board cut for everybody. For example, he said, if I cut $1,000 from a welfare mother, I'll also cut $1,000 from David Rockefeller. So it's going all the way across, across the board. The board <laughs> According to the, uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, Ronald Reagan is having trouble picking his ambassador to Yugoslavia. So far, it's narrowed down to Peter Graves and Jack Lord. <laughs> but he wants to see their audition tapes first. To see. <laughs> Guess what our governor's gonna do out here, Jerry Brown. Notice an abrupt change of pace? Yes. <laughs> Quickly get into a new subject when, you're, when, you're, when you run out of gas. <laughs> get back close to home. What? <laughs> get back close to home. That's right. <laughs> In other words, when a joke is dying, we, it's a quick comedy segue, and you kind of pick up your voice and you talk a little faster so the audience uh, doesn't understand you. <laughs> what did I start to say? <laughs> About California. Governor Brown. Jerry Brown is going to run for the Senate, he said. He is going to try to unseat the junior senator from California, who is S.I. Hayakawa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, he's the junior senator. That ought to be a very interesting Senate race. Jerry Brown versus 75-year-old, 74-year-old Senator Hayakawa the Young and the Restless versus General Hospital. <laughs> now you're caught. You don't, please. You don't. Look. What? You don't have to play Johnny Olson when I do a joke. <laughs> hey, how about that? <laughs> Wait a minute. I think you do tonight. <laughs> What are you doing over there? What, what are you getting ready? I'm not done yet. Oh, yes, oh. you are. <laughs> I'd give a million dollars for a straight man. I don't have any straight. Anyway, what was I talking about? Anything important? Some sh Here's some show business news. Kind of sad. I hate to report things like this. It was, uh, excuse me? Oh. Oh, I thought maybe you're having a meeting with the writers. <laughs> Were they here today? What? <laughs> were they here today? Yes, they were here today! <laughs> and I wish I'd have seen them. <laughs> Here's some sad show business news. <laughs> it, was an, it was announced. <laughs> You'll like it when I struggle, don't you? <laughs> you really love that. Okay. Lonnie Anderson the luscious star of WKRP Cincinnati television show, apparently is divorcing her husband. Oh. Now that's, uh, it should be an interesting case. I understand he's asking for half of what she's got. <laughs> okay, we have a, uh, oh, one other little item. I'll just throw this in because I'm coming to the end of this anyway. Uh, in the newspaper today, a brothel in the state of Nevada where they are legal in certain counties, named Maud's Ranch, was impounded by the IRS for non-payment of taxes. Now, if you think about it, actually the IRS and the brothel have a lot in common. They provide the same service to the public. Doc Severinsen tomorrow night, March 6th, and Saturday, March 7th, will be appearing with the Long Beach Symphony Orchestra 
at the Terrace Theater in Long Beach, right? Yeah. Yes. That should be fun. I'm going to be playing the steel guitar. Oh, then he's all steel guitar. <laughs> yeah, Doc does a lot of those concerts around the country with symphonies. And, and they must good. be a lot of fun. Remember last week when we, uh, uh, I read a letter from a uh, Terry Marshall for the American Library Association yes. um, telling us that uh, libraries all over the country have a service that you can call by phone if you have any kind of a question. They'll look it up for you if they have the uh, available reference books there. And she says, the response has been great. She says, library phones we checked around the country were very busy today. Incidentally, we were talking about her name, whether she was a woman or a man, mm. T-A-R-I. She says, I'm female. My mother couldn't spell. <laughs> yeah. Terry Marshall. They sent us some more questions. Some of the most asked questions that people call the libraries and ask about. Remember the first one I did last week was how many different animals there are in a box of Cracker right, Jack? Exactly. How many of each? Right. I guess really, five. You guess five bears, yeah. but there are two goats, three on a yeah. partridge or whatever. Have with some more. Now, here's a question. How many dimples are in a regulation golf ball? <laughs> two. Two? One on each end. <laughs> on a golf ball. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of a football. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a football. Wait a minute. Where's the dimple in a football? On each end, they have a little dimple. An indentation? Is that a dimple? Yeah, but this is a golf ball. I, I misunderstood that. Oh, well. I would guess there are 604. No, well, you just take a yeah. shot at it. 336. Oh, was it just one golf ball? <laughs> yes. John Davidson's golf ball has 646. <laughs> you know what the uh, uh, origin of the word posh is? Yes. Do you really? Yeah. You know, when somebody says they were in posh surroundings mm -hmm. or it's a posh party, what, that, what does that mean? That means port out, starboard back. <laughs> How could posh mean I don't know. Out, starboard it's, it's back? It just sounded good. There are no dimples on a football. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't get... This is not a football, it's a rubber football. If it were real football, right yeah. there, there's a dimple. Yeah, you're right, all right. Okay. Okay. No, port out, uh, you're uh, thinking of... Something. Uh, oh, that's... Uh, you're thinking navigation, of, the, of yeah. the buoys yeah. in, a, in a channel, Mark. But it has something to do with that. Well, you're close. Let me tell you what it means. The word had its roots in the days of steamship travel. All right. Passengers traveling by the peninsula and oriental lines would book their passage as port, outward, starboard, homeward. What the hell did I say? <laughs> Didn't I say port out and starboard back? Didn't That's I right. say that? Yes, you did. But that, but that would be post, not posh. No, you said, what does it mean? Not how do you spell it? <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's right. Want to punch out a football? No. <laughs> Who was the first United States president to appear on television? On television. I would say Roosevelt, but you're that's right. not it. You're right, you're right. Franklin Roosevelt at the opening of the New York World's Fair in 1939. I was there. Really? I was in the audience, really, yes. At the World's Fair in yes. 1939? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, of course you could have been. Sure, I was. <laughs> you could have been too, if you had the bus fare. <laughs> You're gonna have bus fare soon. Like. <laughs> He's the first to... Little no, no, that Calvin Coolidge was the first president to appear on a waffle iron. <laughs> Roosevelt was the first one to tell him. <laughs> bus fare, you're hot tonight. <laughs> Really hot tonight. Derwood Kirby was hot once with Gary Moore. <laughs> Derwood Kirby is no more. Got real hot. Got real hot on a show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got Slim Whitman with us tonight. We have Charles Nelson O'Reilly and the Mighty Carson Art Players, and we'll be back in a moment to bring all of those things up and more to you. My first guest tonight. Interesting story. Rather an interesting uh, little preface to the introduction of my next guest. I. I like music, I listen to a lot of music, but I, until some months ago, was not really familiar with Slim Whitman, as a lot of people in this country were, but he was very popular in England. And they ran a commercial on late night television, I think it came out of some of the satellite stations, I know one from Atlanta for sure, um, advertising Slim Whitman albums. And people said, my God, who's, who's Slim Whitman? And he's kind of he's kind of caught on, and in case you missed the commercial, we're gonna run the commercial for you. This is the one that is seen all over the country, and really brought Slim Whitman to the attention of a lot of people in this country. Would, Bobby, you want to run that? Commercial that played all over the country. And we, 
We started talking about it, and people recognized the name. And I said, hey, you know, it's only fair we asked Slim Whitman to come on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome, please, Slim Whitman. I remember you. You're the one who made my dreams come true. A few kisses ago. I remember you You're the one who said I love you true Didn't you know I remember to a distant bell Stars that fell like the rain out of the blue Then I will tell them I remember you I remember to a distant bell Stars that fell like the rain out of the blue Then I will tell them I remember Tell them I remember Tell them I business a few years, but you kind of really snuck in the back door in this country. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I started uh, in, in March 1948, which yeah. is, is about 33 years ago. And every year I made records. Um, I made them in Nashville or Chicago yeah. in London somewhere. But, uh, but the United States, it seems uh, if you found one, you had to thumb through them, you know, to find them. Right. And, uh, but England, uh, the rest of the world, was was great. Yeah, I've noticed in the commercial they talk about the top of the yeah, charts. Yeah, it's the first the, time on American TV. And something. in the Guinness Book yeah. of Records, yeah. sure enough, you held the uh, British charts, top of the British charts, for a record 11 weeks. Yeah. And yet you really weren't that well known in this country. Well, it started here, really, in, yeah. in, in 1952. I had uh, a million seller of Indian Love Call. And I had several, in fact, I had Rosemary, who was a big hit here before there. Right. But then it kind of leveled off, and... Uh, and I went over overseas, and they held on to it a little bit longer than, uh, than the United States did. Now, this campaign that was on television with the albums has been sensational, because I've read that you're, you're playing concerts all over, you're doing colleges, you're doing uh, back to high schools, and uh, Yeah, back where I be. started, really. And uh, it, if I had to pick any one thing in, in 33 years that has been the highlight, the biggest thing in Whitman career, it had to be last year. And, and it, it had to be the commercial that some people laugh at. But they buy it. Yeah. Mm. See, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, that's the name of the game. Yeah. How many? Now, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. How many albums did they sell? Well, it's, it, it's two million and rising. Two million? Oh. And, and rising, yeah. It, it, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> you got a song you want to read? Oh, yes, yes, two yes. million. <laughs> that's, and Ryan, it's still going yeah, up. It, it's, still, it's still selling. You've got a good voice. You slide in and out of that falsetto. Out of trouble. I get in and out of trouble. Yeah, but you all yeah. of a sudden, you uh, what, that's well, not it, easy to do. No, you uh, well, get, get into that high register. I think it's something you have to be born with. My son is a singer. In fact, it's like yodeling, yeah. isn't it? You can't learn it. Yeah, he's, he's a singer, but he doesn't yodel. See, right. e even though I'm, I'm his dad, he can't yodel. It's a thing you're born with. And uh, In fact, when I, I started, I had my first hit record. They said, why don't you start a yodel school? I didn't know how to start it. Right. Well, if somebody asks you yeah. how to yodel, Slim, what do you tell them? Well, I just say, oh, 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 that's it. That's all I know, see? Now, you, and, it, I, and it, I know it, if I do that, it's going to sound ridiculous because... That, that's you, it. But you have it clear back in here, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's down here somewhere. I don't know where it comes from. 
No, I can't. There's it, no it's, way. It, it's down in here somewhere. I don't know where it comes from. I just, uh, when I think a word needs it, I, I go into it. Slide right into it. Slide right into Very it. Effective. And then uh, that's, that's the way it happens. Well, I'm really glad for your success. It's nice to see something like somebody who started a career and then all of a sudden have a, a resurgence of it. Well, it's, it, it's good to be, uh, it, it's good to be everywhere. And, and what makes me real happy is the fans that have stayed with me all these years, even though they didn't know where I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> they knew you were somewhere, but not where, huh? Yeah, they're actually coming up to me and, and saying, uh, we know you're happy, but we're just as happy as you are. And that's great. And that, that's really great. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And the little kids coming up, could we get your autograph? That's nice. I said, man, you, you, bet, you. bet. You bet. You you. bet. Those of you who watch public television are no doubt familiar with a series about the cosmos hosted by perhaps the most prominent scientist in the world. He is a rare talent for making the mysteries of the universe understandable to the average man on the street. We are in his observatory right now where he is just about to discuss his recent discovery of four new galaxies. Would you please welcome Dr. Carl Sagan. Preoccupied there for a minute. Dr. Sagan, we understand there's been yes. a remarkable breakthrough in astronomy. Yes, in the incredible vastness of the universe, we've uh, <laughs> discovered five new galaxies. Wait a minute, Doctor, isn't that four new galaxies? No, you're wrong. Just this morning I discovered a fifth hidden galaxy fifth. through this very telescope right there. See, this new galaxy is rimmed by granular minerals similar in composition to what we commonly know as salt. Mm -hmm. In the center are ice crystals, crescent-shaped green objects, resembling limes, and a large volume of alcohol. Wait a minute. Some of that stuff is here on the end of the telescope. Seems that I have violated the cardinal rule of astronomy. What's that? Never use your telescope to stir margaritas. <laughs> but it is discovery yes. nevertheless. Dr. Sagan, do you believe yes. the uh, universe is expanding? Indefinitely, as the scientists say, it is open. I feel the universe is open most of the time. But closed on major holidays, Christmas, Passover, Arbor Day. Oh, doctor, speaking of uh, open. Hmm. <laughs> we almost got a glimpse of Dr. Sagan's Big Dipper. <laughs> Scientists claim that they can see almost halfway to the edge of the universe. How is yes. that? How is that possible? By using a high-powered telescope, you search for certain astronomical signs. What kind of signs? Well, scientists know the edge of the universe is near by the positioning of the various stars, myriad number of stars, by studying unexplained radio signals from distant points. And these are the two most important signs. No, the most important sign is this I have right here. I've had it photographed and computer enhanced. It's the last McDonald's before, <laughs> before the edge of the universe. Oh. They've actually sold over nine billion cosmic hamburgers. <laughs> and of course, billions and billions of fries. fries. <laughs> <laughs> Let me replace this. <laughs> Is it true that the light waves from the galaxy travel through space at the speed of six trillion miles a year for over 10 billion years? That's the EPA estimate. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. <laughs> but, Doctor, six trillion miles, that boggles the imagination. Well, there is an easier way, an analogy to think of a trillion. Oh. Just imagine that you piled everyone who ever lived on Earth, one on top of the other. And that would be a trillion. That would be an orgy. <laughs> but afterwards, they would smoke a trillion cigarettes. <laughs> We don't have people in the laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the theory of relativity? My theory of relativity is don't give your relatives your home address. <laughs> they come around, borrow money, you'll never get rid of them. Do you foresee a day when whole families will travel you from... You find <laughs> scientific discussion amusing? <laughs> trying to educate the public yes. to the vast intricacies of the universe, and you find this funny. <laughs> well, not that last one, but I did up till then. Do you... 
do you fear foresee a day? I foresee a day, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I will be here. That's right. That's right. You'll be here alone in your that's lab. Right. I'll be here alone in the lab. <laughs> You'll be billions and billions of miles away. Do you foresee a day when whole families, entire families from Earth, will travel non-stop to Mars? Non-stop or non-stop? Non-stop. <laughs> yes. No, they will make one stop on the moon to let the little ones fill up a crater. You know, the little ones in space you know, can't take journeys like that. I've read that the size of distant galaxies is determined by radio waves. Where did you read that? In a scientific magazine. Name I the title. To it. It's called Scientific Mind. There is no such term. <laughs> <laughs> then someone chipped me. <laughs> yes. What did you read? I read that the size of galaxies is measured by radio waves. Mm -hmm. Is yes. that true? Yes. <laughs> that was a question. Yes. yes. <laughs> These... Are you on something? No. <laughs> These uh, radio waves were emitted 10 billion years ago. In fact, I have a tape here of those 10 billion year old radio oh, waves. Oh, I'd like I to hear it. that. Let's listen to it. Oh, uh, who do you make, Andy? <laughs> what is that? What? What is that? <laughs> I believe that came from the far-off galaxy Kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, have you anything to do with the space shuttle that's supposed to go up next month? Yes, I've worked with innumerable projects associated with the space shuttle. What has been your most important contribution? This uh, young lady here. I'd like you to meet her. She is the. She is the. She is the stewardess on the space shuttle, mm -hmm. and together we've developed an, a new instant citrus drink for the astronauts. And what is it called? Moon Tang. <laughs> if you'll excuse us, we're going to have, have a little.